Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. All praises to Allah, the creator of the universes and their sustainer, the provider of believers and unbelievers. And may his choicest blessings be on the seal of his prophets, the last of his messengers and his holy progeny. Well, we have reached a stage at which Imam Hussein salam, declares his intention to depart from, from Medina. And as I said, that departure is proof that he was not out for political motives because he departs without even mentioning this to the Madanites. But the more poignant point is that when he departs from Medina, one finds him going to the graveside of the Holy Prophet. History says that he went and bid farewell to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, 11 times. And every time he left the grave of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, he returned to it because that Hussein salam, could not part from the grave of his grandfather. And how could he have? That grandfather, who was so kind and gentle to him, that grandfather who would pick him up in the course of his sermon and keep him on his laps whilst he was delivering a sermon in the, in the mosque at Medina. How? And, and the love that he showed. Indeed, that grandfather whom he heard raising his hands, saying to Allah, Oh Allah, I love Hussein. You love Hussein also. And love him who loves Hussein, who heard the Holy Prophet say those words. And those words are reported in all our books, Shiite books and, and, and books from Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jamaa and books of non-Muslim writers. That the Holy Prophet prayed publicly for even those who loved Hussein alayhi salam. Well, how could Hussein salam, leave his graveside? But ultimately, he did. All this shows that Hussein salam, was so reluctant to part from, from Medina, he was, not, he was not out for worldly reasons to go to, to, to Makkah or to Kufa or to Karbala. His sole purpose was therefore that saving of that religion with Jet very grandfather of his had brought from whom he found it so painful to part. He then moves to the, to, to, to the graveside of his mother, Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha, and bids farewell to her as one would expect a son to do. And he found it so painful to part from that graveside. So you can see that there was no political pressure that was driving Hussein alayhi salam. Otherwise, he would have said salam to the Holy Prophet, salam to his mother and walked away to, towards that which was driving him to, 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 to the destination and, and the ambition that he had in his mind. Well, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, feeling the pain of her son, says to him from the grave, O my son, Proceed where you're going to. You will find me with you all the way through. You will find me on your way to Karbala. You will see me in Karbala. And I will be with the family even post Karbala. And this is exactly what happened. They saw her everywhere. That incident on the eve of Ashura. When Imam Hussein salam is in the course of his prayers. His sister comes in to interrupt him and says, Oh my brother, I hear a lady reciting Marthias about you behind the tent. I, I am disturbed. And Imam Hussain alayhi salam turns to her and says, Zainab, you have not identified the voice of our mother. She is she's our mother, Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, who is already in Karbala, well to receive me tomorrow when I come down from my horse. And that was just one of the numerous examples and incidents that have been reported in history about her presence. But this is how Imam Hussein salam, departs. He is advised to take, to take a clandestine route at night so that Walid is not able to chase him. And Imam Hussein salam, says, no, I will leave 
I will not leave Medina like a thief. I will live like a noble man. I will take the known path, the, 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 the usual road from Medina to Makkah. I will tread that path in the way in which any noble person would have taken that path and I will get to Makkah in the official way. And indeed, this is what he did. He did not conceal his departure as uh, Abdullah bin Zubair did, as Abdullah bin Amr did, because they too had the wind that uh, allegiance would be sought from them and they were not in a position to make allegiance of, of Yazid. And Imam Hussein moved over to Makkah. In Makkah, he reached Makkah on the 3rd of Shaban, five days journey from 28th of Rajab. And having reached Makkah, he set up a home there. This is where he intended to stay. But something classical happens in Makkah. He receives letters from Kufians. Kufians came to know that Muawiyah had died. Naaman bin Bashir was the governor of, uh, of Muawiyah who became governor of Yazid in Kufa at the time. Kufians under Suleiman bin Surd wrote letters to Imam Hussein salam. And in the letters they said to Imam Hussein salam, we have no leader, we have no Imam. And we believe that if you came to us in Kufa, we will be, we will be able to, to be directed in the right direction towards guidance we will get on to Sirat al-Mustaqim and we will be able to absorb Islam in the correct way hence come over to us we are prepared to make bay'ah to you and to accept you as our Imam of the time and obey you and follow you now, you can see how impossible the situation became for Imam Hussein On the one hand, he knew from what his grandfather, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his progeny had told him that the Kufians were not going to be loyal to him. They would abandon him and indeed give him up to, you, to, to Yazid. He knew exactly what had happened to Imam Hassan alayhi salam at the hands of the Kufians. He knew exactly what happened to his father, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, at the hands of the Kufians. It would have been naive for him to trust their word and to move straight onto them. And yet, here was a solemn task that was being put onto his laps. Muslims telling him, we need a leader. We need a leader to guide us. We need an Imam who will put us on Sirat al-Mustaqim, implying that they were not sure that they were on Sirat al-Mustaqim at that point in time. How could he refuse to undertake such a solemn, such a spiritual task? He was the Imam of the time in reality. He could not have betrayed his followers. He could not have betrayed those who wanted to follow the path of Allah glorified and exalted. How would Allah forgive him for that? On the other hand, if he did go to Kufa, as he, as he was called, and was abandoned, the whole purpose of the martyrdom would have been lost. That which he wanted to achieve, a sacrifice of such a magnitude that Muslims would have shivered down their spines. They would not be able to turn around and say that the word of Yazid is superior to the word of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. They, were not, they would not have been able to give up the Holy Book the Quran which Allah had revealed on the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. Well, how was this to be compromised? That was the, the, the grievous decision that Imam Hussein salam, had to take. And indeed, in a matter of days, by the 15th of the holy month of Ramadan, he had received 150 letters from various Kufians, signed by various of them, saying, Come over, we are waiting for you. The fruits have ripened on our trees. Come over so that we can, we can pluck them and, and be able to enjoy them. Well, how was he to reply? And the response that Imam Hussein gave was a masterpiece of sagacity. 
he wrote back to them saying, I am sending to you a person whom I trust, Akhi wa ibni Ammi wa thiqati, my brother, my cousin, and one whom I trust. I am sending him over to you. You receive him as you would receive me. The word of Muslim is my word. The, the teachings that he gives you are teachings, as it were, from me. And your allegiance to him will be allegiance to me. So he gave them the opportunity to make allegiance to him straight away. He told them that he was sending an emissary straight away. Well, they could say, but we want you. We don't want Muslim. So he firstly used the word thiqati, that he is one trusted by me. And then ended the letter saying, if Muslim writes to me, saying that truly you have made allegiance to him, you have made allegiance to me, that you are prepared for Islam, that you are prepared to receive me. If my representative sends me that sort of a letter, then I will come over myself to join you and I will be with you until Allah determines his will. And then he says, I promise you that a true imam is one. And then he sets out the qualities of an imam in total contradiction to the qualities of Yazid. He says a true imam is one who follows the book of Allah, who follows unflinchingly the sunnah of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, who, um, who, 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 who undertakes Amr bil Maruf, leading people to the right path, and joining them to do what is good, munkar, and restraining them from that which they are prohibited. Well, wow. you look at Yazid, there was not one ayah of Quran that he followed. There was not one ayah of Quran of prohibition that he obeyed. There was no Amr bil Ma'roof with him because he himself violated principles of Islam. There was no Nahya Nil Munkar because he lived on Munkar himself. So the Kufians could see that the one whom we were opposed to, the whom the one we were to we wanted to give up, and hence were calling Imam Hussein alayhi salam, is exactly the one who is criticized in dogmatic terms. But you will see, and this is of crucial cardinal importance, Imam Hussein alayhi salam could have criticized Yazid in various ways. The conduct of Yazid, his behavior. His, his, his illegitimacy to be on the, th on, 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 on the throne of Khilafah, <coughs> various angles Imam Hussain salam, could have taken. He takes only one angle, and that is the angle of obedience to Allah, glorified and exalted. So you can see that the path and the direction of Imam Hussain salam, was exclusively one for survival of Islam, for domination of Islam over every other principle. For the word of Allah to survive, remembrance of Allah, worship of Allah, and that He is who al awwalu wal akhiru wal zahiru wal batinu lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd yuhi wa yumit wa huwa hayyun la yamut bi yadhi al khair wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Those words, holy words, are practiced in life, and if there was one person who did practice, it was Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And he sets it out in his letter to the Kufians. Beyond per adventure, I am sending a representative I trust. You make allegiance to him. He writes back to me saying that you are sincere in your invitation. I will come over. But from the angle of practical pragmatism, if you receive a letter from a number of letters from such people, you do not act blindly and just go to them. Because you might get a shock of your life. It may turn out to be completely opposite of what they are saying. On the other hand, if they are sincere and they are Muslims and they are followers of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny, you cannot ignore them. The course he took was such a beautiful course in which he did send his emissary. He sent Muslim Ibn Aqil of great eminence, great piety and, and, and full of virtues. And indeed said, if he writes to me a letter, I will come over. Muslim Ibn Aqil goes over to, to, to Kufa, 
and the Kufians make allegiance to him. Figures like 15,000, 20,000 are read in the books of people who made allegiance to him. There is a figure of 35,000 people of, in Kufa who, had, who made allegiance to, to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Ultimately, Muslim ibn Aqil alayhi, alayhi salam writes a letter to Imam Hussein alayhi salam saying, so many people have already made allegiance to me in your name. Hence, come over to, come over to Kufa because they are ready to receive you. They are ready to make uh, allegiance to you. Come over so that Islam is spread and, 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 and you lead them to the right path. That letter reaches him when he is still in Mecca and Imam Hussein salam prepares himself to go to, to Kufa. He prepares himself to go to Kufa and, and, and waits to perform his Hajj and immediately after Hajj he is to move to Kufa where he is to propagate Islam as taught by the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his progeny. So he kept to his word that if Muslim writes to me, I'll come over. That stage arrived. Allah made it possible for Imam Hussain salam in his sincerity, provided him a stage at which people made bayah, and Muslim writes a letter, and Imam Hussain salam keeps his word to the Kufians and prepares himself to set out from Kufa so that he goes and guides them. And this is the way a true Imam behaves. May Allah make us his true followers his, and give us, imbue us with the sincerity that Muslims need in the world today to be able to live along the sunnah of the Holy Prophet. Peace be upon him and his progeny. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm.